on the webcast. Let's have a little bit more light here. We have 12 people in the room. Alison, Arthur, Irina, John, Blinda, Lisa, Arthur Peters, Maria, Gail, Iwan, Ellie, Joe Oliver, Elaine, and Tony. So uh, <clears throat> we're a minute past seven. We'll maybe give it another minute before we get started. Oh, we've got another person joined, 14. So how do you feel, Caesar, being uh, the guinea pig, the very first person to be coached live on the uh, monthly webinar series that we've started? Well, not only I'm live now, it's the, it's not only I'm the first person live, I'm, it's my first time when I'm live in something, or, well, into a, into a webinar. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to hold to my presence, to hold on to my presence, to not fall into... <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's no pressure whatsoever. No pressure. <laughs> just, just imagine it's just me and you having a friendly conversation. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Thank you very much. Yeah. We, we have a chat functionality on the side. So, um, we, I mean, I'll be doing some live coaching, but if, if, uh, if anyone wants to just say hello, you're more than welcome to it down, down the side in the chat. Uh, see, we've got 15 people now turned up, so we've got an extra person. Just give it another 30 seconds or so. <coughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, I think we'll we'll get started. We've uh, three minutes past. We've got seventeen people joining us on the call. Um, and how do you pronounce your name? Is it is it Caesar? Caesar is just fine. Yeah, my language is pronounced differently, but Caesar is just fine. Okay. Um, we've got a bunch of people saying good evening, hello, hi. So cool, you're doing this. Thanks, Gail. Hello from Alison. Hi from John. Hi from Maria, hi from Lisa, hello from Joe Oliver, hi from Nico. So a lot of uh, friendly names there. Um, we've also got Sandra coming later on. Uh, Sandra uh, will be coached second, so we about, a, about 20 minutes, half an hour each. Um, it's the first time I'm doing this as well in this setting, so um, we'll, we'll see how we go. But I thought it would be a great way to um, for people to see some some live coaching. And, and what that looks like because I've had some coaching conversations with people from the group and um, they've been they've remarked it's been a little bit different to to what they expected in, in a good way so this way I think more and more people get to to experience that so um, I'll just start by saying um, obviously normally in a, in a coaching call um, I keep everything confidential um, this will obviously is different you know it's being recorded and it's going out to the group so um, as open as you can be, we'll be dig deeper and, and, and help us to um, hopefully unearth some things which could be helpful to you. I um, appreciate that it's going out live and there might be some things you don't want to share, but um, I, I may ask some quite pointed questions because I think that's the, the, in the detail is, is sometimes where we can find out some, uh, some interesting things to help you. So um, just to start off with, what, what would you like coaching around today? It's a very good question. 
because usually I don't want to prepare about about this. And the first thing that comes to mind is uh, the idea of create of creating clients. I'm a salesman at heart. I mean, I'm a salesman ever since I graduated as an engineer. So selling it's what I do. I wrote a book about selling, but that uh, that's besides the point. However, I discovered that actually in coaching, selling is different. So. I wanted to gain more clarity about about this, just to 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 get from people's from people's experiences who are more experienced than me, and uh, the idea of create, of creating clients in in, in in this business. We we can talk about that, and um, you know I'm happy to talk generally. What I find is well, two things. One is more interesting for me but I think also more effective for the person being coached is if we have some more specific examples. So could you tell me a little bit about where you've had an interaction with someone and you found it to be different to your traditional sales approach? Uh, a specific point, since, since you mentioned, the, the moment you, you talked about the specific point, something came up to mind and uh, is really making the invitation for a coaching conversation. So I have an encounter with somebody and let's say we meet over a coffee just to get to know each other. And um, here we go, they mention something that they see it as a challenge, as a problem, as an issue, to which I believe I can have some input about. And uh, since we've met for a coffee to know each other, somehow um, in making an, an invitation for a coaching conversation with all those restrictions about how to frame that coaching conversation of going deep and so, and so forth, considering that actually we've met just for a coffee. This bridge is a little bit, let's say, um, not as harmonious to me. If that makes sense. Yeah, so <clears throat> one thing that I will, um, I'd like to explore really is um, is what are you doing kind of from the first moment? Because one thing that I find is that people often have questions around a certain part of the process in terms of signing clients up. So it could be, you know, making the proposal. It could be, you know, inviting them into a conversation. It could be any one of those things. But really the coaching starts from the moment they met you. So... Uh, and there's no rules around this. The, the, you know, I'm just going to share some of my experiences with this, and, and maybe it will be helpful to you. But I'm just wondering, when you're, um, when you're inviting them to a coffee, what's the context around that? Is it a professional conversation? Is it a friendly conversation? Are you friendly. being very social? A friendly is not, it's not, it's not about business. It's about getting to know each other. Mm. That's hence the blurriness between that and the coaching conversation. Right. And I, and I think that's where, I'm not saying it's impossible, but that's where it becomes more difficult because if you meet someone in a social setting, they're expecting to have a, a, a social conversation with you. Right. And, and then when you move from that social setting into a business setting, then that's where it can it can appear difficult. It's like you know, meeting your your friend for coffee and then saying, "Hey, do you want to buy a car that I've got?" It's a little bit, it's a little bit awkward. Right. But, um, so there are a few things around this. One is I find that a lot of um, coaches don't, and I did this. I did this a lot. I I was looking for clients, but I wasn't letting anyone know that I was a coach and that I was a professional and I did it for a living. So. Now, when anyone meets me, they have an idea that I'm a coach. You know, even if it's a, a social conversation, you know, it tends to come up, so what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a coach. Well, what does that mean? And then we have a conversation. So they, they know what it, what it is that I do. And then if I'm, if I'm going to have a coaching conversation, I make it clear, you know, that, that I make it clear that we're now having a different kind of conversation. And I didn't used to. I used to just talk to someone and they're like fingers crossed like 
are somehow I get them into a coaching conversation and then somehow they see value in that and then they sign up with me. But the difference is um, really showing up as that professional. So, you know, let's say you're meeting someone for a coffee and, um, well, here's the thing. Are you meeting them for a coffee because you want a coffee and then it occurs to you to invite them into a coaching conversation or are you meeting them for a coffee because in your head you want to invite them to a coaching conversation? Perhaps I should uh, I should make, put some details over here. Let's say we I, let's say I'm into a, a meetup group like like a business networking group or something like that. Obviously, I introduced myself as a coach. This is what I do, and so forth. However, when we meet, when when I invite somebody to get to know them, um, is particularly when I'm new to these towns, and I'm, I don't know that many people over here. So I, when when I'm inviting them to get to know each other, it is to know each other. They know I'm a coach, but it is to know each other, to learn more about what we do. And what I'm doing basically in now, as, uh, as in present moment, if they mention something which, again, sounds like a challenge for them, particularly selling, because that's basically my specialty in a way. So if they mention something like that, now I'm asking, now, is this a challenge that you would like more clarity about? Would you like to have a coaching conversation about that? Hmm. In this sense. So I'm, uh, this is what I'm doing now, because up until you know, recently, the mistake that I discovered that I was doing was that I was launching into a coaching conversation right there on the spot, trying to get them to understand or to switch their perspective right there on, that, hmm. on the time of that connection cafe. And that was a mistake, obviously which I'm not doing anymore. I'm trying to just give them a sense that I could help them in, 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 that, in that matter, but I'm not going overboard in this mm -hmm. way. But that's the kind of thing that I found recently for myself. But, uh, but uh, yes. So, you know when you're, when you're having a conversation and you're inviting them for a coffee, let's say you're in a business networking event, you invite someone for a coffee, how much, um, what do you do before you do that? I mean, what's the conversation like? You know, even in order to get to know them, what's the conversation like? Let's say, um, for instance, when they introduce themselves in that, in that group, I hear something that, that I can resonate with. And then when I, at the end, when I approach them and uh, invite them to, to meet, I say, I heard you saying that. And, um, you know, this is something that, you know, if I find interesting or I like that or something along these lines. And then we meet for a coffee and we explore each other, basically, get to know them. Sometimes those people, for, yes. So be before you invite them for a coffee, you, you know, you say, okay, I like this about you, you know, let, let's explore that. Do you do any exploring there and then or is it just like you hear someone talk, uh, you approach them, hey, I like that, let's meet up for coffee, and, and it's a very short interaction. I believe we, um, I would say that we explore a little bit about that. Let's say, for instance, somebody says um, a thing that I often hear in, in networking groups. People, uh, when they introduce themselves, they, they say things like, I'm not selling anything. You see, I'm not a salesman. I'm just, you know, creating relationships or, you know, ta -da -da, stuff like that which to me means that they see selling as a concept as something bad, as something awful, as something like doing something wrong to the person that they are talking with. So that's why they distance themselves from the idea of selling. And uh, the way I see it personally, I see selling as a natural way of life, basically a necessary way of life. And... Um, I discovered that once you are comfortable with the concept of selling for what it is, like influence basically, it's, this is what it is, which happens all the time. It's not about forcing, it's about just an exchange of value. So we might explore just a little bit around this mm. perspective, not too much though, just to show I, things like, you know, I heard you saying this about selling, and I mind guessing you that you see selling as something which is not that good, which is not, you know, smelling nicely or something like that. So we, you know, we talked maybe you know a minute or five minutes about this, 
and uh, so, and probably I suggest that uh, you know I I have a different perspective about about this, which might help you probably go more be more forward in co in contacting people for promoting whatever you're selling. And um, so I'm saying something along these lines when I'm inviting them for a coffee and then we meet. So so the so okay that sounds good. So you you know you you talk about something relevant. You have a little bit of a um, and explore around what, what it is that you see. Uh, you invite them for a coffee. And then in the coffee conversation, I, I guess what I'm not seeing is how, the, how is the coffee conversation different to a coaching conversation in your eyes? It's not framed as a coaching conversation in which they are <clears throat> they are coming there to explore things inside them. It is a connection cut where we just get to know each other. So that's the distinction for me between a coaching conversation when we agree to go deeper and to tweak some ideas and maybe explore parts of the person which are which they might not be comfortable going into where, where, when they are at a Starbucks, for instance. Uh, so that's the distinction that I see between a coaching conversation and a coffee connection thing. So I've got I've got a couple of questions. Um, firstly, why do you need to frame it as this coaching conversation? There are so many answers to that. I'm trying to choose one. Um, the way I see it, in this my perspective, a coaching conversation is a sensitive thing, where people open up to play with you, with deeper stuff. A connection coffee. It's pretty much like when you meet somebody at a party, and you just you know have a glass of wine in the corner of the room talking about various stuff. But there's a distinction that I see. I'm not saying it is the right one, this is how I see it. Are you open to maybe looking at it in a, in a slightly different way? Absolutely. See, uh, there is value in, in having something framed as a, as a coaching conversation, as a professional, I, I understand that. But, but equally, it's not only the frame, in my opinion. See, it sounds like you're doing a lot of things right. You know, you, you've met someone, you've seen that they have some thinking around selling, which you can help them with. You mention it to them and say, I noticed you said this, and um, I'm, I might be wrong, but I'm guessing that you see sales as a bad thing. Is that true? And they go, oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, you talk a little bit about it and say, well, why don't we meet up and, and explore further, right? It's very gentle, but it's leading them into a coaching conversation. Now, when you have the next conversation, for me, whether it's coffee, whether it's a phone call or a Skype call or, or, or meeting in, in, in a, a morale office, it's more about how you show up in that situation. Because you've already met them at a networking event, which is, you know, it's a it's a formalish event. It's not a it's not a dinner party. Um, it's a it's a business kind of place. You've then spoken to them about something you could help them with. And so then, when you meet them up for coffee, for me, of course, ask permission. But sure. you can show up as a coach in that situation. So, for example. I, if, if it was me and if I was a sales coach, and you don't need to do this, this is just an option, but if it, if it was me, I, I can imagine myself having that next conversation with a person. I probably wouldn't do it in a loud environment. You know, yeah. So if it's a really loud coffee shop, I, I wouldn't do that. I would do it in somewhere which is um, a little bit more private. So when I've met clients before, I've gone to a very nice hotel in my hometown, which has got a wonderful lobby and, and waiter service. And we just sit there, and, and it's and we've got space. So I sit somewhere where we've got the space to to converse. It's not the same as a, as a cost of coffee. And then I might just very gently go into it. So you know, I'm not going to go and do what some people call high flame coaching because someone's new to it. 
But I might say, um, have you ever been in a sales job? Well, they'll say no. Right? And say, okay, well, w what do you think of salespeople? Right? And I, and I do some more, it's a little bit more gentle, but it's still coaching. And what I want to do is, I want to coach the person. Now, of course, you've brought up, you know, that you don't want to just jump in. Absolutely, ask permission. And, you know, you, like I've done here, you know, are you open to see this a different way? You can keep asking questions. You can keep checking in with them. But absolutely, I would coach them. Absolutely. You want to give them a flavor for what it is that you do so that when you invite them to say, you know, let's have a deeper conversation, you know, whatever that looks like, they've got a flavor for what it is that you do. They're not going from all of a sudden this very polite, friendly, let's have a chat, how many kids have you got, let me show you a picture of my dog. That's not what's, that's not what's interesting to them, right? You want to go to, hey, I can help you. Let me. Do you want me to keep helping you? And a lot of people get stuck in, uh, and Steve Chandler calls this the, the social self. They get stuck in being social, being light, being nice, being friendly. And in fact, some other people get stuck the other way. Some other people go, I'm a coach. I need to have a real high flame coaching conversation. We need to go in deep. And that puts people off. You know, it's not about either extreme. But it's using, I would say, your wisdom, using common sense, using your gut to go as deep as the person feels comfortable, lead them in and help them see what coaching is with you, help them have some insights, help them have some new thoughts and ideas. And then it's much more natural for them at the end when you say, would you like to continue this, that they're going to go, oh yeah, this is great, I'd, I'd, love, I'd love more of this. Does that make sense? It does, it does. I have a question here or a, a little bit of a challenge, that if, if I may. Sure, um, sure. What you mentioned, for instance, so after, let's say, the person says something about selling and I'm talking with them, showing that I, I might have a different perspective about it, and uh, you suggested for me to say, would you like to explore that? Would you like to have a little bit of, you know, to tweak a little bit to see how that goes for you? To, have a coaching, basically have a coaching conversation about it. So basically you're asking in that, you're suggesting for me to ask for a coaching conversation in that moment, basically. That's an invitation for me, the way I see it. That's an invitation for a coaching conversation, although it is not a deep flame and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's still a, a, a clear invitation for a coaching conversation, for exploring a particular issue. And I, this is the thing as well though, sometimes I'd call it a coaching conversation, Depending on the situation, sometimes I wouldn't. So I wouldn't. I, I might not even use the word coaching. I might just say, you know, I've got some thoughts around that. Would you like to explore it? Right. So it can, it can be quite gentle, but you're right. It, it is leading them down that path. And for me, if we've, um, as coaches, if we identify an issue that the person has got that they want help with, it, it should be very straightforward, right? Sure. If, if, if you're approaching someone and they're not interested in sales, and you're trying to get them to, into a conversation about sales, yeah, that's going to be more difficult. But if you identify someone that would like help or, or struggle with sales, and you identify that they've got an issue with that, it's going to be more likely they will want to explore that and at least have a conversation with you about it. Absolutely. The challenge that I have is that, uh, for instance, in this particular meetup group, one of their rules is to, you know, so basically they encourage connection, you know, just to get to know each other as a family over there. But they kind of discourage sales conversation, whatever they understand by selling. They discourage selling conversations about you know, things about what I do and start presenting your business and so forth. So in those lines, inviting that person to, let's say me, even if I don't use the words coaching conversation, it's still in my mind, basically a coaching conversation. That for them would be a selling interaction. Because basically I'm talking about, or I'm bringing up my stuff over there to help them, if that makes sense. So that would be labeled as a coaching conversation in their vision, or, or as a selling interaction in their vision. Hence the, um, um, you know, the frame of a connection coffee first in that sense. And 
if they like to explore something, so if in that conversation, just talking about stuff, uh, that's how it went up until this moment. Talking about stuff, about their challenges, about my challenges, about my ideas, their ideas, and so forth. If they bring up something that they consider as a issue, as a problem, for instance. Now that's when I'm doing what, what you said. Would you like to explore that a little bit more deeply? A little bit more deeply. I, I, I don't use deep. A little bit more to tweak the perspective. I'm using line uh, words. I, I all the time I'm using different words. Just take different perspectives about that and see what happens. Pretty much this is how I frame it. Now that's a second coaching conversation, which comes from them because they admitted they have a problem they, to which they want a solution. So now it's a, it's a harmonious link between whatever they want and my proposal for, um, you know, let's tweak this around and see what happens. So hence the necessity in a way, in my mind at least, for a connection coffee first. I, I don't know because I'm not obviously in this meetup group. I don't know what their rules are. Um, I, I have clients who have gone to networking meetings and gone straight into a coaching call and it's, it's not been discouraged because you're not, you aren't selling anything on a coaching call. You're just sitting down and helping someone. You're not, for me in my mind, when I sit down and have a coaching conversation with someone or a preliminary conversation, I'm not selling anything because I don't know if they're going to be a good fit for me. Right, right, absolutely. So, but then again, I, I don't want to say, you know, what this meetup group is. Um, for me, if I was in a meetup group that didn't allow me to have that coaching conversation, I'd probably find a different meetup group. There's hundreds of them, right? So that, that's kind of maybe a little bit of a trite answer, but I would go somewhere where you can have that conversation. Or before I have that introduction coffee meeting, I'd spend two or three minutes or five minutes extra with the person to help identify a problem they've got before I have a, a coffee meetup. What I see is a lot of coaches spending a lot of time having coffee meetups and they lead to nowhere. You know, you have coffee after coffee after coffee after coffee and because you're not positioning yourself as a coach, you're waiting for the person to come with a problem, it, you just end up spending a lot of time on coffee. And for me, I find that if you want to be prosperous, if you want to create clients, you've got to be a little bit more focused around what you spend your time on. And you ideally want to be spending your time with people who want to spend time with you. So I don't give out free conversations to anyone and everyone. I, I make sure that, you know, if, if I was in a meetup group and, I, and there were 20 people there, I might only set up a conversation with, you maybe hear the cars in the background, apologies. I might only set up a conversation with one or two people. I might talk to lots of them, I might talk to all of them, but I really am looking for someone that's got a problem that I can help them with that they seem interested in me helping them with. Now how I do that is by asking questions, connecting with them, you know, getting into a bit of rapport, connecting with them, but really finding out what their problem is and then asking them, I might have some ideas about that, would you be open, I'm, I'm happy to spend some time with you. And to me, that's what networking meetings are about. They're about people helping each other out. And the people that I've seen that are the most successful in networking events are the ones that give, you know, they talk about giving value, helping people. And they tend to get business. And again, anyone that you meet, I wouldn't be even too, too worried about signing them up as a client. I would just put all your focus on trying to help them. If you do that, you're more likely to get them as a client anyway. Absolutely. Now, a quick question just for me to get, to get more clarity about that. When you mentioned uh, that you have a little bit of a conversation, asking questions, see if you can resonate, if it's something that you can help them with, is that that conversation in the hotel lobby or it is on the environment of the networking group? Um, I, I don't like adding length into, a, into this process. I don't like adding unnecessary steps into this process if I can help it. So if I can help someone right now, I will help them. If I was in a networking event and someone's got an issue, if I can solve that issue in five minutes, I will solve it in five minutes. Why, need, why do I need to wait to get them into a co coffee or into another conversation? I'll do it right now. Because the more value I can add to someone right now, the more likely, you know, the more likely it is they're going to turn into clients. And if I do that continually, the more prosperous I'll be. 
So I don't. I personally don't don't wait. I don't see a need to. You know, I will do as much as I can up front. I want to make that process as short as possible. I don't need to have 15 co coaching conversations with them to then maybe one day they decide to work with me. If I can help them right now, I will do it right now. And you know, sometimes I've had clients sign up after I've spoken with them several times. Um, but I've had one of my biggest clients sign up with me after 30 minutes of talking to me. You know, he was referred. We had a 30-minute conversation. He was ready. Okay, well then, okay, this is how we work together. Let's go. I believe that's the key, as you say, as you mentioned. He was ready, so he was already prepared. A person who is at a meetup group, let's say somewhere over there, although they might express a problem, they might not be prepared to receive anything. If that makes sense. So that's, I mean, from, from my perspective, I'm not saying I know and so forth, but from a change right. point of view, the, the way I see it and from my experience as a hypnotist and so forth, you can't really, or you can, but it's really a, you know, shoot and miss, that type of thing. If the land, if the soil is not prepared, they are not prepared to receive whatever good ideas you might shout to them. So it has, the, in my mind at least, the necessity for the frame, this is a coaching conversation where they, where they come prepared for something to happen, rather than a quick conversation at the end of the meetup or... I, I, I will disagree with you there, Caesar. I, 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 know, I, respect, I respect that you, you have a different point of view, but I will disagree with that, because I found that um, the, the way to get someone into a full, and you're right, look, there is value in having a formal coaching conversation, absolutely. And when I have those, I set them up, and I set them up in a certain way in the professional, absolutely. But I will say that as I've changed how I've shown up, those conversations happen more easily, right from the beginning, right? So right from the beginning, before when I would talk to someone, I'd almost hide the fact I was a coach. Right, and you want to like set it up down the line, get them into this formal coaching thing. That scares a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to, like you say, they're scared. They don't. They think they're going to do it wrong. They think that they're not going to be coached properly. They they have all these thoughts going on in their head, which puts them off going into a formal coaching conversation. Most people haven't been there, right? And it, you know, a lot of. I mean, you've not asked the question, but sometimes a lot of coaches ask, um, "Where do I?" You know, where do I find clients that pay me? Well, there's very few people walking around thinking, I want to coach, right? It doesn't happen. We create clients, and we create clients by helping them, by, by showing them we've got value, showing them we can help them, help them with a problem they've got. So even for me, if I'm, if I'm introduced to someone um, anywhere, if they talk about something and it's like, oh, my God, I can help them with that, I will mention to them that I can help them with that. You know, I don't need to get them into a formal coaching conversation. At a certain point, and this is where the skill and, you know, it's an art. Coaching is an art. It's not a science. It's not do this, do this, do this. And that's where the art of this comes in, you know, to, to work out the point at which you transition it from saying, having a conversation to, look, if, if you want to explore this further, let's, let's set some time aside. But even to get to the stage where you say, if you want to explore it, let's set some time aside, it's how you show up, right? It's, um, you know, if I had a medical problem and I was in a party and there was a doctor there, I wouldn't go and speak to him afterwards unless I knew the first five minutes of conversation, he knew what he was talking about. So, you know, let's say, oh, I'm, I'm, I've got some back pain. And maybe he's not a doctor, maybe he's a chiropractor, maybe he's sports massage person, maybe something else. But if he starts asking me, how long have you had that pain for? Oh, this. Do you find you get it more when you wake up in the morning? Yeah, I do. How did you know that? Oh, I've, I've seen this quite a lot. Yeah, um, just stretch for me. Just move to the side one second. Okay, yeah, just move to the side. Okay, I can see your posture. Have you, have you had this for a while? Okay. So I know what he's talking about. He's kind of diagnosing me. And he's like, you know what? I might be able to help you. That. If you're interested... Here's my card. Make an appointment. You know, make an appointment. I, I, I'm, I can fix that up. I've, it's, that's easy. And then they go back to the party. So he's done enough to show me he can help me. And you know, wh where that level is, it is a bit of an art. You know, you'll find that yourself. 
But that's what gets people over the line to to working with you, in my opinion. And it doesn't need to be a formal like, okay, I'm either going to have nothing or I'm going to have this really big formal coaching conversation because that will put a lot of people off. And I and I it sounds like you're finding that already. I can resonate with with with, with what you said, and that's. It aligns with my latest uh, tweaks of perspectives around that. And if I were to conclude, because I realize it's a little bit over uh, over the uh, over the half hour, and uh, Sandra, it's uh, it's next. Just to conclude my um, revelations about this, our conversation for, for others, just to get a sense of what have, maybe it works for them, maybe not. The first thing is showing up. So basically, who you are. The the, the clear distinction that uh, I believe Steve put, put it very, very good between the social self and the professional self. And if I were to, to make um, an analogy, coaching is not something that you do, it's something that you are. So basically you are that coach all the time. It's not like you're creepy and you know all sorts of you know faces and so forth, but you are that, you live from that place all the time. So when something, uh, a person mentions something, then you are coaching them on the spot without being too pushy, but you're coaching them yeah. on the spot. On another thing, the other mistake that I did in the past and uh, that shows up again from, from, from what you just said, when you mentioned the doctor and the fact that in five minutes you need to get a sense that he knows what he's talking about, mm -hmm. the mistake that I was doing was during that coffee conversation or let's say during those five minutes that you mentioned as an analogy, I was going too deeply to I was overly enthusiastic on having them understand the distinction that I wanted to inspire to them. So I was a little bit too overwhelming in a way. So basically I wasn't calibrating enough to see where we stand, if the connection is still there, if they are still with me and so forth. So those were the two things that come from, from what you just said. Showing up, being that person, being that coach all, at all times without being ashamed or you know hiding it or stuff like that and uh, not being too overwhelming. In those five minutes, that doctor that you mentioned, probably he didn't tell you the, you know, the sum up of the last three books about yeah. that disease and so forth. He just told you something specific that could help you in that moment. And then if you, find, if you found that valuable, and, he, and if he said, you know, that's for now, but if you want more about that, come to my, uh, uh, to my practice you know, room or whatever you yeah. call it. Uh, that's something that would encourage you to go there because you already got a sense of how that doctor could help you. So those were the two things that I that I took from from this conversation. Thank you very much. No problem. And the what what I'd say is for the audio that um, there's an audio called Social Self versus Professional Self. If anyone wants that audio, I do have Steve's permission to share it with my clients. For anyone that's on this webinar, if you send me a Facebook message, I'm I'm happy to share that with you guys as well. So thanks, thanks, Caesar, for coming on. Thank so you. next we we have uh, Sandra. Let's see if we can unmute you. Can you unmute yourself, Sandra? Oh, there you are. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm going to mute Caesar. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, Ankush. Thanks. Good, good. Right. Thanks for bearing with us. I've got a little bit over time with Caesar, but uh, we can. We can. I'm, I'm happy to say for five five minutes extra at the end. Okay. I just have to say that uh, my son will come back at nine fifteen. <laughs> so um, then I have to open the door if the doorbell rings. <laughs> so you okay, have to be so in for just five minutes. That's in thirty five minutes. That's uh, nine fifteen. Oh yeah, that's eight fifteen UK time. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we should we should be we should hopefully be done by then. So, yeah. cool. What 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 can we help you with today? Um. Yeah, I thought about that. Um. And just hearing uh, the session with uh, Cesar. Um. I do have clients. Uh, they find me through Google. Um. Mm. And uh, I must say that that's going well. Uh, but I like to expand. And I don't know exactly how. So uh, for me, it is. Um, I'm not going to networking events or whatever. Um, I, I really don't know where to start. 
And when I, um, you know, I listen to some MP3s and stuff like that, and okay, what's the cheese, and you know, what group you wanna uh, take on? I'm getting mixed up about that. So um, I just don't know where to start. That's my confusion in how to uh, in how to expand. Okay, and um, Joseph, can I ask some questions before? Yes, yeah, sure. So, uh, how many clients do you have at the moment? At this moment, only one. I'm okay. finishing that one because I have to move uh, next year in January. So I'm focusing on that uh, first. Uh, so that's a big project for me. And how many clients would you like to have? <coughs> um, for next year, maybe 10, maybe 15. To start with, yeah. To start with, okay. That's quite a lot. Okay, cool. Um, and all of your clients, so you said all of your clients have come from Google. Have you had a number of clients from Google over, over the past however long? Yes, about uh, three years they find me uh, on Google, yeah. And, and uh, how many clients or so have you, have you come through through Google? I think, I think 20, about 20 clients. Okay. Yeah. And what sort of people do you do you work with through Google? What what sort of is there any characteristic about those clients? Uh, yeah, because my website is focused on people in their thirties mm. uh, that are on on a crossroad in their lives, and they they want to change or they want to you know they want to they have problems with their jobs or their relationship or um, so uh, I'm profiling myself as a life coach. And it's both men and women that you work with? Uh, mainly women, but uh, also men. Yeah. yeah. And do you, do you have a preference whether you'd like to work yeah. with women or men? <laughs> yeah. Women. Yeah. Okay, so you've, you've got a preference to work with women and <laughs> working with women in their 30s? Yeah. Okay. And so in terms of expanding, what, what does expanding look like? What does that mean? Do you want, do you want two clients? Do you want... 15 clients all in one go, How, well, what are you looking to do? I just want to have a nice busy day. <laughs> mm. I would like that, yeah. Mm. yeah. And what does your day look like at the moment? Um, next to the coaching business, I'm building websites. Mm. So it's a combination now. And, and how much time do you have to spend, or how much time do you have to dedicate to, to coaching? Uh, I preferably want it to be a hundred percent. But but right now, I mean, so oh, let's no, say no. If, if I if I could get you, you know, thirty conversations a week, do you have space for that, or do, do you, you know, how 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 does that work right now? Uh, no, because uh, I work part time because of my son that I take care of. So um, uh, for me, uh, the coaching is uh, between nine and two in the afternoon. Between nine and two. Okay. Um, okay. And do you have uh, so everyone that comes to you via Google, that's just passive people coming in. They find you through Google. They request you on the site and they come and talk to you. Yeah. Few will come uh, through mouth to mouth, but that's that's only few. That's not much. Mm. Okay. So there 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 literally are um, hundreds of ways to find clients. Because clients are everywhere, and what I can do, and this might be helpful for other people, is uh, I'm I'm happy to go through. I'm just opening a document that I've got of, of some suggestions I made for someone else. Um, you know, I'm I'm happy to go through a few options if you if if you're interested in terms of how you can have or, or start getting in contact with with more clients. Is that something that'd be interesting to you? Oh yes, of course. Okay, let me just find it. Okay, here we go. So, um, someone asked a question online um, once upon a time about where they can have coaching conversations. Because I find that clients are created from conversations. 
right? So it's great that you've got this website and people are coming to you, but um, like you said, you know, the, the, it's a limited amount. Yeah. Um, and I'm also guessing the 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 fee isn't going to be, you know, towards a high end coming from from a website. Or a um, I'm experimenting with that. <laughs> so I had a very high paying clients, mm -hmm. and also uh, clients that paid less. But because I'm just experimenting with, you know, uh, what I should ask for this. Because for me, the three P, the way I'm working now, is totally different from what I did before. So for me, it's new. It's a new field. All right. And what did you do before? Uh, NLP, um, transactional analysis, and family constellations. Okay. Yeah. So, for for me, coaching conversation coaching conversations are the best way to get clients. Right. There are other things that you can do, but really, in the short term, if you want to get and and it's whilst it's great to have an idea you want to get 15 clients really you want to be focused on the next client because when we start thinking in multiples our brain doesn't work that way it's difficult so if you say I want to get 10 more clients all of a sudden it's like oh my god where am I going to get 10 but if you just focus on the next client I want to get one more client you can always think of one more client yeah right so where do these clients exist they, they literally are everywhere. So, one place clients exist, and I just want to give you. I'm going to give you seven examples, right? Mm -hmm. But here's here's one example where clients exist, and that's on any form of transport, any form of public transport. Anyone that sits next to you on a train, an aeroplane, or a bus, mm -hmm. they can be potential clients. Now, not all of them will, but I've spoken. Before I was a coach, I wouldn't really speak to anyone. I got on a train, I got on a plane, I got on a bus. I'd kind of keep myself to myself, unless they were a very attractive female. But that's another that's another story. <laughs> Generally, I wouldn't speak to anyone. Hmm. Whereas now, what I do if I get on a train, a number of times I will end up speaking to the person sitting next to me or opposite me. And it's quite easy to strike up a conversation. And I've met. Um, doctors, I've met university lecturers, I've met all sorts of people, professionals. And um, I remember I, I was on an aeroplane and I was speaking to a guy and he was sitting down next to me, I was in the US and you know we got talking and talked about his business and I said, oh so where are you heading? And he said, well I'm, I'm going to meet my, my um, son. Well, maybe he wasn't meeting, maybe it was the day after, and he goes, well, that's what was coming up for him. He was meeting his son, and he goes, I need to have a very difficult conversation with him. Hmm. And I said, well, this might sound a bit awkward, but I'm a coach. Would you know? We're sitting here for the next hour or two. Do you want to talk about it? You know, maybe, maybe I can share something with you that might be useful, and if not, don't worry about it. You know, I won't take it personally. And he went, sure, why not? You know, we were sitting there. It's something that's coming up for him. And we'd, we'd been talking a bit. We'd got into a nice rapport. Anyway, I spent the next hour coaching him. When we got kept in contact afterwards. Now, he didn't turn into a client, but it just showed me what was possible that potential clients are everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and again, when I went to Chicago recently, I started talking to this guy who was sitting next to me. Turns out he runs networking events, and he wants me to come and speak at one of his future events. So how much, can I ask a question, Mankush? So how much time do you spend to do it for free before you charge? So that's kind of, you know, it's a separate question, and the answer is it depends. Yeah. Right? It really depends on, I'm not one of those coaches who believes that you need to pay up front, you need to start charging, don't give your time away for free. To me, that's not, um, it's not how I work. It's not how I work because personally I don't find it effective and also it doesn't really resonate with me in terms of just my integrity and how, maybe integrity is the wrong word, it just doesn't resonate with me, right, and how I want to share the principles. I find it very, very fulfilling personally to be able to give myself permission to talk to anyone and everyone share anything that I've got. It, it's why I run the coaching group and just give everything away. And I find that 
Um, as I do it, it's far more fulfilling. Mm. And it's good business sense as well because people get to experience me, they know that I can help them and the right people will show up and want to work with me. Mm. And people who wouldn't be a good client for me see what I put out there and, and they realize that we don't resonate anyway. Yeah. yeah. You know, one, one metaphor is um, it's like dating, right? So some, some people will um, maybe relate to this more than others, but you know, it's like asking when, when do you kiss a new person, right? You like, do you kiss them on the first date? Do you kiss, <laughs> wait till the third date? And and the answer is it depends. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you can meet someone, and you know, within five minutes of meeting them, you're 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 locking lips. And sometimes it will take two or three dates of meeting them, and it's a bit more slow. And there's no right or wrong way, mm. but you you get a feel. And it's the same with um, making a coaching proposal or working with someone, it really depends. Sometimes I'll let someone know very soon on how much I charge and how they can, we can work together. And sometimes I'll speak to someone three or four times and I won't even ma mention a proposal because I'm still working out whether I want to work with them. Hmm. Can I ask another question about that? Sure. Maybe a <laughs> so different question, but um, do you always charge the same amounts, uh, or do you, do you, do you or do you have several packages, or it it's, it is depending on the person you have in front of you? I say that I tailor make everything that I do for my clients. Now, have I charged the same fee to two different clients for this for roughly the same kind of package? Yes, of course I have. My, my fees have tended to increase over the last few years. They've just carried on going up. Um, but it really does depend on the person. And that's the beauty with coaching. You get to make it up. Right? You get to decide, do you charge that person X and that person Y? It, it's totally up to you. Now, I, I do, uh, I've experimented a lot. I'm probably getting to the stage in my own practice where I've got more of a feel for what I charge. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, it's not about just, for me, it's not about changing the the rate. It's not about changing what I charge. It's also about what do I give people, right? So let's say you've got a package, and let's say it's, um, I don't know, two and a half thousand euros, right, for mm -hmm. argument's sake, and you're coaching someone for three months, and you're speaking to them every week. Now, mm -hmm. if someone can't afford uh, to, to hire you for that time, and let's say you get into that conversation. Well, one option is to lower your rates, which it's an option. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's an option. But, you know, another way might be to say, well, why don't we speak once a fortnight? They will still get value from that. You're putting less of your time into it, and you can charge a lower fee for that. You know, it's not just about discounting your rate. It's about getting creative, and it's about finding ways to work with people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I work with a number of people in very different ways. Some of them are very involved and they um, coach with me online and we talk regularly and it involves um, live events as well. You know, there are lots of different things. And on the other end of the extreme, there's I, I do coaching for, you know, not many people but a small number of people who um, I'm a lot less involved in order to make it, fit a certain budget or make it worthwhile that we can work together. But again, it really is down to me and I I get to make up who I work with. I get to decide, do I want to work with this person, do I not, and what price do I want to charge them? But when you're starting out, I, I would encourage you to just experiment, play around with it, see what feels right, push yourself, charge more, charge less, and, and you'll start coming to your own conclusion of what works for you. Yeah. Do you want me to go back to these seven ways of meeting clients? Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is again another option. You don't need to do this, but one option is you can you can ask a question on Facebook. All right. So a question on Facebook would be, who would like to have more time to themselves? All right. Another one could be, who would like um, more confidence? Or who would like to have a better relationship? or who would like to have a better relationship with their parents. Mm -hmm. Just asking a question, and then anyone that comments on that question or likes the post, send them a private message. 
Um, yeah. Right? You're getting into it. It's just about getting into a conversation. Mm -hmm. Similarly, very similar to that, you can create a blog or, or a note on Facebook. You can do a LinkedIn article. You, you can create some content. You know, I do a lot of videos. And if you want, again, you want to find people to have a conversation with. Connect with people who like it or comment on it because they're already engaged with you to a certain level. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Uh, another option, and I know, um, I don't know if, I think Arthur is on this on this call. Um, uh, Arthur o Oised, I think is, is his name, he might, he might be on, he might have left. But um, the, the, the next option is to do some co-coaching. So one thing I find is that the more you coach, the better you become as a coach. The better you become as a coach, the easier it is to sign people up to coaching. Yeah. So if you're someone, and this applies to you, Sandra, it applies to anyone who's on this webinar, if you're someone who hasn't got a lot of experience in coaching, if you've not had you know, hundreds of hours on um, under your belt, if you like coaching, or, or if even if you're not new to coaching but you're new to three principles coaching, get some experience. So if you've got time, it sounds like you've got some time in your calendar, you know, do some co-coaching. So Arthur has done that. Yeah, you can, I can see on the web, the message on the side, he said he's here. Uh, and I know that he's set up conversations with four or five people. And I know that he's found it incredibly helpful. He's mm -hmm. grown as a coach by having those coaching conversations. Also, it's good because if you're a coach, most coaches haven't experienced either any or haven't experienced a lot of coaching. So getting co-coached, if you swap coaching sessions with other coaches, and um, Emma McDevitt runs a, runs a group, you know, you can also do it in this group with the coaching, um, coaching using the three principles group, connect with other 3P coaches and say, would you like to share coaching sessions and set up some sessions? N not necessarily to get clients, but to get you used to setting up a conversation, having a conversation with someone, working on a problem, you know, and you will grow. You will make mistakes. You will not not uh, um, not do it perfectly. Uh, Leonard's, Leonard is asking, how do we do co-coaching? Well, you just put an hour aside and say, right, for the first half an hour, I will coach you. For the second half an hour, you coach me, and you come along with something that's alive for you. All right, whether it's um, struggling to get clients, whether it's um, having a relationship issue, whether it's about your health. Whatever it is, just spend half an hour each. And if you want, you can spend longer. But I would I would suggest you know half an hour each and set up a call with someone. And it's very easy. Just send them a message or put up a post. Who wants to do co-coaching? That's it. Uh, point number five: attend a networking event. You know, Caesar was talking about doing this. I know a lot of people do this too. I've been to networking events in the past, and there are a lot of people there. Most people there are trying to, you know, Caesar said it's funny, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Most people are there to grow their business, right? That's what they're there for. Now, what I say is don't just attend, but when you get there, get curious. Get really, really curious. Ask lots of questions. Find out what their problems are and help them. See, most people go to networking events, and what do they do? They try and sell themselves. They turn up with a stack of business cards, and in their head, it's like, I need to give out 30 <laughs> business cards today, right? And they're just trying to give them out to everyone, yeah. right? Like, then I've done my job. I've been to networking events. <laughs> no, you know, that, that's, not, that's not the most effective, in my opinion, that's not the most effective way to be in a, in a networking event. But if you go, and let's say you meet someone, and they're an accountant, okay, tell me about yourself. And people love talking about themselves. Especially at a networking event, they love talking about themselves. Tell me more about you. Why are you here? What's your challenge? What are you trying to get from this networking event? That's a coach. That's coaching. You're asking lots and lots of questions, finding out about them. When you do that, you'll get to find out what is important to them, what their problem is. That's your way into then a conversation. That will then lead you to go, Okay, and it's and it makes sense from their point of view. Why would someone who's really really busy, who's got some problems, talk to you, a coach? They're not interested. Well, they are interested in themselves. Now, if they say, "I'm really really struggling with stress and burnout," that's my problem. An accountant. I've got a really great business. Um, I've taken on two new partners, but I'm really struggling with stress. That's my biggest problem. Bingo. You've got something that helps them. 
So you might say to them, you know what, I, I, I help people with that. I've got a great track record. I might be able to help you. No promises, right? I might be able to help you. Would you be interested in having a conversation about that? Would you like to explore that? You might even not do that. You might say, would you like some resources on that? I'm happy to send you a resource. Um, George Prancy has got a fantastic, um, I think the three videos uh, the, called The Real Source of Stress on, on YouTube. Great, great videos, really watchable, great for new people, and you can share them. All right, so really uh, it's a different way to approach networking. Um, point six, um, reach out to all <coughs> So if you've been in a corporate job before, um, even if you haven't, if you're an NLP coach and you've got NLP colleagues, right, any old colleagues, if you get on well with them, meet them, schedule a time to talk, you know, and, and the conversation will pretty much go, well, what are you up to? How's things for you? And they'll say, what's up with you? You might say to them, well, I'm, I'm moving away from NLP. I'm trying three principles. Oh, well, that's, what's that all about? Right? Well, you might say, okay, well, you want to know what it's about? Why don't we set up a conversation? Yeah. Right? I'll coach you. You'll see what it's about by me sharing it with you. I can talk about it, but you're not really going to get an experience of it. Why don't we experience something? So tell me about a challenge that's going on for you, and I will coach you in a three principle style as opposed to an NLP style. You'll see the difference. If it's a if if you've been in a corporate job before, you can reach out to old managers or colleagues, anyone. They're willing to have a conversation with you. Mm. Um, Point seven, and and these are these are literally just seven points, which um, they, I could I could come up with a hundred of these, but I'm just giving you a flavour, right? Point seven, deliver a talk for any local meetup, for any business group, for a health centre, whatever interests you, you know, where someone might might be interested. I've even been to, um, I mean, I'm not I'm done yoga, but I went to a yoga studio, and there were there were flyers on the side like come to this free talk or come to this talk. You know, that sort of place, they love having that. You know, there are a lot of well-being centers. Um, alternatively, you could go to business groups if you want to work with corporates. Um, just get in contact with them and say, hey, I'm, I'm a coach. I work with people around this. Would you be interested in me coming and talking? Now, a lot of these places struggle to find speakers. And they struggle to find speakers that will talk without charging them. Right? So... When you, especially when you're new, you can get in front of a group and sit down and listen. I, I did a talk a few weeks ago to um, a local religious center and just said, hey, I'm a coach, and I spoke to the president there. And he said, well, why don't you come in and give us a talk? I went, sure. So like, 15 people turned up. And there were 15 people who had never heard of the principles. Some of them were kind of family friends. that even though they had three years, had never really inquired about what I do. But going into that scenario uh, really enabled them to... Um, you know, get an experience of what it is that I do. And one of the guys I met the next day, and he was like, you know what, I spent two hours last night l researching these principles. Mm. Much more likely to, and I probably wouldn't coach him because of my relationship to him, but they're much more likely to turn into clients once they've had that experience. So getting yourself in front of a, um, a group is, is another great way. So, like I said, these are just seven ways. There's so many ways you can get in front of people. You get in front of people, um, you can have conversations. You have conversations, you can make proposals, you make proposals, you can get clients. Yeah. Thank you. I, I know we started a little bit late, but have you got any other questions that you want to ask? No, not for now. I think you've covered a lot. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's good. Thank Great. You. So I know we've got a, a lot of people on on the on the side. Um, Leonard said that he's had to go. Uh, before we finish, if, has anyone got any questions about anything that I asked Caesar or I spoke to Sandra about? Um, I I will put a couple of minutes aside to to very quickly address anything that I've missed out, or uh, if you've got any comments or feedback as well, that's. Uh, uh, I will wait on here for another minute or so uh, to answer anything that anyone's got. And let me know if this was useful. See that Leonard had a request or something? Is that right? Yeah, let's see what I can do. It says requested to... Oh, I don't know what I've done. Oh, 
It's gone now. <laughs> yeah. I think you might have left the chat because he said I have to go. Okay, I'm not getting any uh, questions come through on the web chat. I, I will wait another. Oh, there we go. Trish missed a lot of it. Will there be a replay? Uh, yes, there will be a replay. Um, you, there will be a recording of this. Uh, I think as soon as I stop the broadcast, it will get uploaded to uh, my Facebook page, uh, so my YouTube um, page. So um, I will share the link, and I think the link gets emailed out as well to anyone that's registered for this. So um, yeah, you'll you'll be able to uh, watch it back. Tony said, loved it, thank you. Cheers, Tony, thanks for feedback. Alison said, useful, thank you. Uh, Lisa said, very useful, thank you very much. Uh, Joe Oliver, grateful for this evening. Um, I'm new to the idea of being a coach. When will you do this again? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to do this once a month. So for the coaching using the three principles group, that's what I was planning on doing once a month, having two people on. Um, and just doing a webinar for, for everyone in the group. So that's the plan. Uh, this was a bit of an experiment, so again, very useful uh, if people find it useful. If they don't, we won't do them, but but if you do, happy happy to do them. Uh, Gail says she has a question. Um, it seems this was a lot of helpful suggestions, but that is different than a 3P type of coaching where you go deeper. Yeah, so for me, that's a, that's a good question, Gail. Um, for me, really, this call and really the group is about helping coaches who are three principles coaches grow their practice and get the principles out into the world. Um, so what I do is I might cover, I guess, what what you may call the sales process, the the client creation process, um, and and talk about tips. A lot of the times when I talk to coaches who are three principles coaches, um, I also um, do talk about the principles. If something shows up where I see misunderstanding, I may I may talk about the principles too. But yes, this is different than than me sitting down with a with a client talking about the three principles. That that's a different kind of session. So, good question. Um, uh, Arthur says wonderful session, great insight. Uh, Maria said good examples. Uh, thanks for supporting co coaching. Uh, Gail. Sometimes you may go deeper with tips, more more with tips, and then go deeper. We can do, yeah. So I, I'm open to whatever the co the group wants. If if there's some feedback that you want to share in the group afterwards, if there's something that you guys want to see different, I'm really happy to do this. For me, this is this is all about giving value to the group, really helping the coaches in this group, helping them get what they want. Um, there are a lot of places where people talk about the principles, going deeper with the principles. I wanted to give something a little bit different here, so I hope that's been useful for everyone. Okay. So I don't think we've got any more questions. So uh, if that's everything, then I'll, I'll stop the broadcast. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I know we've gone a little bit overboard. Thanks. Um, Sandra, I know we had a little bit less time for you, um, and um, I'll see everyone on the forum. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.